Now, from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy, and welcome to Facing South Florida. We have a lot to talk about today, and we'll be joined in a couple of minutes by Congressman Ted Deutsch, and later in the show, Lieutenant Governor Carlos Lopez Cantero will be here to make an announcement of some political import. You'll have to stay tuned for that. But first, let's get to the big news of the week. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? This is what, let, let me ask you this. What about the fact they came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. So, so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. And you have, uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. You had a group, you had a group on the other side that came charging in without a permit, and they were very, very violent. Make no mistake about it, that was the President of the United States coming to the defense of white separatists. Amazing. America in the age of Trump. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Ted Deutsch. Congressman, what, first off, thank you for coming in. It's great to be here, thanks. What was your reaction to, I don't know if you watched it live on Tuesday or if you watched it later, but when you saw it, what was your reaction? Uh, well, it, it was appalling, it was infuriating, and to think that the president of the United States watched what happened in Charlottesville very closely, as he told us in that video, watched very closely the Nazis, the white supremacists, the white nationalists marching down the streets, screaming about Jews, carrying torches. He watched that and his takeaway was that there are some very fine people there and that all sides, there are many sides that have blame here. For his failure to stand up and, and simply condemn the white supremacists and Nazis, if he can't do that, then he provides cover to them. That's what's so appalling. Uh, Jim, my, my dad fought in the Battle of the Bulge. The Nazis put a piece of shrapnel into his head. To think that all of the brave Americans who have served our country fighting the Nazis, that all of those people who have fought, who spilled their blood and went to jail to advance our civil rights, that, that all of that, the hatred of all of that was on display in Charlottesville, and the president saw fine people. It's really, it's disturbing, it's upsetting, and, I, and Congress at this point, since the president won't do it, Congress needs to go on record against it. Against the actions or against the president as well? Because there's been some talk about whether or not we should, the Congress will move forward with some sort of censure to the president. Right, I think when we go back to Washington in September that the United States Congress, the House and Senate should have an opportunity uh, to, to censure the president to go on record. Look, it's not, it, the fact is, it's not asking too much. A lot of my Republican colleagues have spent this August break, uh, th this past week especially, tweeting about their concerns, about how upset they are about the president. If you look at some of our local representatives from down here, if you look at what Senator Corker has said, Senator Scott, when they talk about, uh, about the more the president losing the moral authority, they've said it in tweets, but that's not enough. Congress, at this moment in history, history must go on record uh, and must make clear that it's simply unacceptable for the president of the United States to countenance the white supremacists and Nazis that we saw in Charlottesville. Will this Congress, though, do it? Are there enough Republicans who are willing to stand up? Because I've seen polling that also says that there are a lot of Republicans who will side with the president on this. I think there are. I think there there are Republicans and Democrats, by the way, in a bipartisan way, who condemn violence and who condemn violence wherever it comes from. That's not what this is about, though. The president tried to make it that. This is about simply saying that Nazis and white supremacists, that hatred, bigotry, anti-Semitism, racism, is is unacceptable 
period. That's what this is about. And my Republican colleagues, many of them, have been willing to say that in social media. I think that for future generations, we shouldn't require future generations, my grandchildren, to go back and try to figure out who tweeted what when the president did this. I think there should be an opportunity to censure him formally so that we are on record condemning that kind of tolerance for what we saw. But do you think it would pass? I don't. I don't have any. I, I have no mistaken belief to think that the that the Republican Speaker of the House or Senator McConnell in the Senate would bring something like this up. Now, even if there are Republicans who would readily vote to censure the president. So you mentioned Senator Corker. Senator Corker, I thought, Republican from Tennessee, who was on the short list to be Vice President, who was also under consideration to be Secretary of State, someone who has been aligned with Trump, said said last night, and we're taping this on Friday, so said on Thursday that the president has not demonstrated the stability or the competence to be successful or even an understanding as to what the character and nature of this country is. Do you believe that those words? There, there's, been a, there's, the, there's been a lot of talk these past few days about the character of the country, about the values of the country, and who we are as a country. And in a debate that, that pits one side that suggests that with Klansmen, uh, but there were fine people among them. If that's one side, then what Senator Corker talks about representing our American values, that's on the other side. I want to I want to play some re local reaction. We caught up with T. Wood Fair, who mm -hmm. an African-American, mm -hmm. who's also very conservative, though, as well as attorney Stephen Johnson, who chairs the Black Advisory Council for Miami-Dade County. Let's play their sound now. What happened in Charlottesville was an unfortunate circumstance because somebody lost their life. But I do believe uh, firmly that what happened in Charlottesville is not representative of America. I was not afraid of George Wallace. I was not afraid of Bull Connor. I was not afraid of Lester Maddox when he ran us down the street with an axe handle in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm not concerned about a person. I'm concerned about a attitude. And the attitude of America today is not anti-black folks. That's all I'm concerned about. Charlottesville was not a tipping point to black America. Charlottesville, I think, was a reminder to the rest of America that, yes, these hate groups are still here. They're organizing. They're, and they don't just hate black people. They hate black people. They hate brown people. They hate Jewish people. Where are we today as a country? Well, I, I don't, I, those were really powerful, powerful clips. That, that I, I would agree that we're not about, this is not about one person. This is not, uh, this is not about uh, leadership in, in any of these groups. This is about the fact that, uh, that there are these groups that still exist. There are more of them in Florida than, all, than in any but one other state in the country. And we have an obligation to say that, fight. Wait, wait, say that again. Let's, there let's, was, let's, a, let's, go there ahead. was a report that came out just this week that said that, that, there are, uh, that Florida has the second largest largest number of hate groups in the country. Now, if uh, it, it, when you acknowledge that, uh, it doesn't mean that the country has changed. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that we've somehow adopted those views. Far from it. There, we need to isolate them. American, our, our American values are not with those who hate, not with the racists and the anti-Semites and the bigots. And the opportunity that we have this week, and frankly, the opportunity that unfortunately the president missed, was an opportunity to remind all of us in this country and our friends and allies around the world world that America is not a country that div that divides along lines of race and religion, but that is a country that unites. And that's what's been so frustrating about. Does what the president have, the, have any moral authority left, in your opinion? I think the president needs to, to take steps to reassert moral authority. But in the meantime, if the president continues uh, to tweet out tweets that are false and divisive uh, and, and 
tear people apart, it makes it hard to bring people together. And that's what that's what we need. And frankly, that's why but, there needs to be some action. But there's a political calculation here. You're seeing it out of the White House. Steve Bannon was quoted, the president's advisor, mm -hmm. said that the longer they, meaning Democrats, talk about identity politics, I got them. I want them to talk about racism every day. If the left is focused on race and identity and we go with economic nationalism, we can crush the Democrats. Essentially he's saying if we can pick at that scab, keep those wounds open, get the Democrats to jump, just as you're saying you're going to do, attacking the president on this issue, that we can seem to be, the Republicans can seem to be the party and Trump can be the man who is putting America jobs first. And that that's a fight that he wants because let the Democrats be the party of Jews and blacks and Trump can be the president for everyone else. First of all, remember that Steve Bannon, before he took the seat next to the president in the White House, uh, ran what he described as the home for the alt-right on the internet. Uh, so let's remember who he is. And I would point out to Steve Bannon that the line of Republicans, this is not a, this is not a partisan issue, the line of Republicans that, is, that are standing up and taking strong words and actions against the president is significant, and it includes many from right here in our, our own community. When you quote Senator Corker and Senator Scott, and you look at the quotes from, uh, from Senator Graham and from our own representatives down here, Congresswoman Ross Layton and Congressman Corbello, you look at the statements, these aren't, these aren't rabid Democrats, these are Americans who are standing up against the hatred and the divisiveness uh, and the, the bigotry that we saw on display in Charlottesville. So I don't care, frankly, what Steve Bannon says. Uh, I think Steve Bannon does a disservice to the president and the country when he speaks like that. That's why a lot of us think he should no longer continue to serve in that position in the White House at all. I just wonder if he actually speaks for more people than we realize. Congressman Ted Deutsch, I thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. It's an important discussion and we'll continue it. Now, when we come back, Lieutenant Governor Carlos Lopez Cantera, he's got an announcement to make.